Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white Enter the Battlefield value deck featuring the Jolly Balloon Man as our commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This 3-mana 1-4 has haste, can pay 1-mana and tap it to create a token that's a copy of another target creature we control, except it's going to be a 1-1 red balloon creature in addition to its other colors and types. It's going to have flying and haste, and we have to sacrifice it at the beginning of our next end step. can only use this as a sorcery, so we'll only be making balloons during our own turn, but that's fine since we often want to attack with them anyways. So our deck is filled with creatures that have powerful ETB effects or maybe effects when the creature attacks and that way we often want to wait to play the Balloon Man until we have some of those creatures on the battlefield. That way we can immediately activate the Balloon Man and get some value even if the opponent had a removal spell for our commander at the ready. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories to help with the deck breakdown. We've got a small initial category of instant speed interaction, a couple counter spells and then some instant speed removal to interact with the opponent's game plan. Then we've got a little bit of mana acceleration. Some of these include creatures that also play well with a Balloon Man. And then we've got a ton of creatures that we wouldn't mind copying with a Balloon Man. And these are roughly split up into three equal categories. We've got our card advantage, creatures that maybe draw a card when they enter the battlefield. We've got token makers, either making creature tokens, sometimes treasure tokens as well, so those can also help us ramp. And then finally we've got our removal creatures that maybe deal damage when they enter, or exile or destroy something when they enter the battlefield. Then we've got a few ways to maybe double up on our effects, either by doubling the amount of tokens we generate from the Balloon Man, or maybe doubling our ETB effects. And then finally the miscellaneous section also includes some creatures that can enhance combat, either by pumping up our creatures, maybe by untapping the Balloon Man or all our creatures when they attack, so we get to take multiple attack steps. So that's our deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, starting with our instant speed interaction, our counter spells in white include Mana Tithe and Reprieve, which bounces a spell back and draws a card. Then we've got some instant speed removal with Swords to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt at 1 mana. At 2 mana there's a Get Lost, which can also hit enchantments and planeswalkers. A Braid can destroy artifacts or deal 3 to a creature. And then Lightning Helix is a Lightning Bolt that also gains us 3 life. Then we've got our mana acceleration with a Warhound, which can maybe catch us back up if the opponent managed to accelerate their mana, or if they started out on the play, we can still get a planes and put it on the battlefield. Arcane Signet can make a man of any color, always good to include in most decks. The Ornithopter can also make a man of any color, and it's also a creature for potential synergies. Ashnot's Altar is a way we can maybe sacrifice the token we generated with a Balloon Man and then still generate two mana, so it still nuts us one mana total. And Altar can also enable some infinite combos with a Balloon Man, like the one alongside a Zealous Conscript, which is a 3-3 with haste. When it enters, we gain control of target permanent until end of turn, untap it, and it gains haste until end of turn. So often used to steal opposing permanents and attack with them, can even steal opposing planeswalkers for what it's worth. But the real combo is with a Balloon Man if we have Altar, since then we we can use the conscripts to untap the balloon man after activating it and making a token of the conscripts and then we can sacrifice the token to alter to make two mana and since it only costs us one mana to activate that's a way to generate infinite mana and therefore also infinite conscripts to just attack the opponent with a bunch of 1-1 one -one flyers with haste. And then the simulacrum will find a land when it enters and draws a card when it dies. It also provides a lot of value. And then we get to our card draw creatures including a spirited companion at two mana got the doll, a 2-1 that draws and discards, unless we control a creature with power 2 or less, then it simply draws a card, so also perfect with a balloon man. The inspiring overseer gains a life in addition to drawing a card. Priest of Ancient Lore is similar except it doesn't fly. Recruiter can search up any creature with toughness, two or less, reveal it and put it into our hand when it enters. So great to copy with a Balloon Man and can also search up some free interaction such as Solitude where we just need to pitch a white card from our hand to exile an opposing creature. So that's also great to eventually copy with a Balloon Man if we just hard cast it. And then we've got the Enduring Innocence as one of the new Glimmer creatures that will stick around if it gets removed in the form of an enchantment, can draw cards when smaller creatures enter. Seasoned Pyromancer can discard multiple cards to draw, also great when empty-handed as it will simply draw two cards. We've got Circuit Mender gaining life when it enters and drawing a card when it leaves, including when it dies to the Balloon Man's ability. 
We've got Sun Titan, which when it enters or attacks can return a permanent with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So we can also get back our commander if it got answered. So sometimes we don't want to send it back to the command zone if we have a Sun Titan ready to return it. And then the Carnosaur lets us discover 5 when it enters, can also use it as removal, but uh, getting the discover 5 on the Balloon Man's ability is awesome. And then we'll often play Combat Thrasher as a prototype, a 1-1 one -one double strike that draws a card when it enters. And then our token makers include a Jani, which is a legendary, but is still good to copy with a Balloon Man as we get to make a 2-1 cat token when it enters. And then we can sacrifice an Ajani to the legendary rule to transform it into the Planeswalker, which can also quickly take over. Charming Scoundrel can potentially make a treasure token when it enters, or discard and draw, so it can also help us ramp. The Sky Knight Vanguard makes a 1-1 Soldier token when it attacks, so it can also be good to copy. Blade Splicer makes a 3-3 Golem token, and they will have First Strike for as long as we control the Blade Splicer, whereas a Master Splicer will give our Golems plus 1 plus 1, and also makes a 3-3 when it enters. Then we've got the Evangelist making a 1-1 Bat token when it enters or dies. It's also good to copy and sacrifice, and it has Battle Cry, so even as a 1-1 it can still help pump the rest of our team. Toby makes a 4-4 Beast token, although it cannot attack or block alone, and once we have enough creature tokens in play they will gain flying as well. Fable of the Mirror Breaker doesn't need an introduction. The Shaman token alone is already quite good, making a treasure when it attacks. And then eventually the Reflection of Kiki Jiki is another way of copying our creatures to get more ETB effects. Then we've got Besa, which is great at catching us up if we're behind, maybe making treasure tokens, fish tokens, gaining life or drawing cards. And then the Blazing Sky, another legendary that we don't mind sacrificing to the legendary rule, since it will leave behind some treasure tokens, or perhaps exile the top two cards of our library that we get to play until our next turn. And then as a white overlord, we can cast using the impending mechanic to make a pair of insects. But if we get to seven mana, it can also be great as an ETB effect, making those insects, and then can copy it with a balloon man to attack and immediately make even more insect tokens. And then our removal includes Brutal Cathar, especially good at exiling opposing creature tokens. We've got the Elite Spellbinder to disrupt the opponent's hand. A Loron can destroy artifacts or enchantments, similar to the Witch Enchanter, which can also be played as a land. Skyclave Apparition exiles an opposing non-land, non-token permanent with mana value 4 or less. Flage can deal 3 damage and gain 3 when it enters, and we can pretty easily escape it, thanks to all our fetch lands as well. And then copying it with a Balloon Man, even though it's legendary, can still give us that ETB effect to give us an additional 3 damage and 3 life. Then there's Eowyn, which can exile a bigger creature when it attacks. We've got Solitude and Fury as potentially free elementals to disrupt the opponent, and they're also great to hardcast and then copy with a Balloon Man. Got Inferno Titan distributing damage when it enters or attacks, and the Red Overlord also very similar, dealing a 4 damage in one chunk. Then in our doubling category, there's Marvin, which will also inherit the Balloon Man's ability. So now if we have two mana spare, we can activate two Balloon Men. We've got Delny, which will double the triggers of any creatures we control with power 2 or less, of which we have many, and those creatures are also going to be harder to block. Procession will double our tokens, including the Balloon Man's tokens, as well as maybe treasure tokens and other creature tokens we generate. Penharmonicon will double ETB effects from artifacts and creatures that enter, and then Elish Norn will stop opposing ETB be effects as well as doubling our own. And then our miscellaneous section includes a few flicker effects. Ephemerate is great at re-triggering ETB effects on the cheap. And then we also have a Restoration Angel at 4 mana. Then a land tax is at its best if we're on the draw or if our opponent's putting additional lands in play as we can now search up 3 basics and put them in hand. Fear of missing out can discard and draw when it enters. And with Delirium enabled can also maybe give us an additional untap and attack step. So it can also maybe untap the Balloon Man so we can activate it twice. And that can also maybe set up some infinite combos assuming the fear of missing out can keep attacking. Goblin Bombardment, a way of sacrificing our creatures to deal damage. So if we generate a token that's about to be sacrificed end of turn anyways, we can get some damage out of it, redirect it to the opponent's creatures, and can also be good in the face of board wipes or removal. And then we've got Arabella, which can also amplify our damage if we control lots of smaller creatures. Combat Celebrant can be exerted to untap all our creatures and give us an additional attack step, so that can also give us a lot of extra damage as well as untapping the Balloon Man. And then we've got the Enduring Courage, giving creatures two extra power and haste when they enter until end of turn, so it can also pump up our balloons. And when it dies, similar to the Author Glimmer, it will also come back in the form of an enchantment. And then we covered the Zealous Conscripts already. 
and then the mana base has lots of basics. Arena of Glory can be a way of giving our creatures haste, especially powerful with creatures that have an attack trigger. We've got the channel lands for additional utility, and then lots of red-white dual lands providing mana fixing, including Sacred Foundry, as well as the Elegant Parlor, which we can also search up with most of our fetch lands, since they have both basic land types. Parlor letting us surveil one when it enters, and then the fetch lands are good for fixing our colors, as well as filling the graveyard for escape. And then we also have a few token makers for our token synergies. Fountain Port and Mirex can also be pretty useful. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, facing Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge, so blue-black artifact control deck. Our hand's got some okay cards. Circuit Mender provides value even if it gets removed. It's good to copy with Balloon Man. And then Overlord can give us access to a bit of removal. Counter spells are going to be problematic here if we're trying to resolve some expensive spells. And we'll probably end up surveilling with a parlor. Maze Mind Tomb can provide some card advantage as well. So our opponent is kind of strapping in for a grindy matchup. Master Splicer is pretty good. It gives us something to do on 4 mana if we don't want to play our commander. And then it's going to be Circuit Mender on 3. Maybe Balloon Man on 4, we'll see. Replicating Ring for Ramp. So our opponent's not going to be playing many cheap creatures. Arabella would have been good on turn 2. But now I think uh, Circuit Mender makes sense. Can expect the opponent to have some board wipes as well. For now it's going to be a Hedron Archive. Sadly we don't have artifact removal in hand. And a Midnight Clock. So plenty of mana to deploy Tesseret even after we remove it once. So yeah, going Balloon Man provides a bit of value. I think Master Splicer is more important here since it applies pressure. Plus it also plays around a Wash Away which could counter our commander otherwise. So at least we're in a position where if they play Tazaret, we can uh, deal a bit of damage to it. Two unknowns in hand. They're going to play Tazaret. At the very least, they could still activate Tomb, but it's going to be Karn instead. Doesn't get to tutor anything with a minus unless there's something in exile. Can still animate one of their artifacts into a creature, potentially, but decides not to. Alright, so their opponent's mostly tapped out. Tazarat fires up his laser beam. Alright, so do we play around a potential wash away? If they wash away Balloon Man, I could still play Scoundrel plus Bolt or play Arabella. So, yeah, I think it's fine to try Balloon Man here, since uh, copying the Splicer would be good. Alright, that works. So, I'll fetch. Probably should have activated Balloon Man right away, since we gave the opponent a brief uh, opportunity to answer Balloon Man before we got to activate it. So that will also pump up our author token. We'll go to attackers. And then... Send these at Karn, taking out Tazaret's more importance. Yeah, this looks good. And then I can keep a bolt. Let's see if they have a board wipe. Portal to Phyrexia, not quite a board wipe. So I can keep two creatures in play. And then our opponent can start reanimating our stuff as well. 
So if I sack two tokens, they don't get too much value from Portal. And then I could just sack the Balloon Man as well. Now one potential problem is Karn animating the portal and making it a 9-9 creature. That's going to be difficult to get past, but they might fear removal for it. Or I could just sacrifice Circuit Mender and then I also get to draw a card, but then they get to reanimate it each turn. Yeah, maybe keeping Balloon Man in place still worth it. Find a Thresher. And our opponent's plussing, but not targeting anything. Alright, so do I want to bolt Karn here? I think I do. Just spend my mana so we don't have to worry about their Planeswalker. And then Anointed Procession is pretty nice. Yeah, let's go for it. Can immediately activate Balloon Man on Splicer. Make two Splicer tokens, which in turn make two golems each. Attack Karn. And yeah, this is one way we can beat a portal to Phyrexia. We must regroup and reconsider. Their opponent's getting back our Circuit Mender. The Midnight Clock can also eventually refuel their hand. And there's Tesseret again. Guardian Idol. And a Flesh Gorger. Pretty good too. Tesseret fires off his Laser Beam. We're at 14. And yeah, Flesh Gorger, they can keep getting back with portals. So we would really like to find a more permanent answer to it. Although, let's see here. Balloon Man activate on Splicer is always powerful. Can play Elish Norn beforehand, which will once again give us more Splicer triggers. So that's definitely the fun play. Is there anything better? If I play Scoundrel, it will make two treasure tokens. So it sort of pays for itself. So I guess it could be good to get that on the battlefield. And then play Elish Norn. And then Balloon Man still on Master Splicer. If I target Scoundrel, what happens? So I would get two Scoundrels, which the effect triggers twice. So that would give me a lot of mana, to be fair. Although Master Splicer still has to be better here. So let the triggers go off. Alright, that's a lot of tokens. And then if I send three tokens at Tazeret, we're guaranteed to take him out. And then one flyer at him as well. And then this can go face, this can go face. Yeah, that seems fine. Their opponent's probably blocking the 6-6 six, six that's not going after Tazeret. They decide to keep the Flesh Gorger in play. Should be able to double block it pretty easily. Alright, let's see if they can find a way out. Next turn we should have lethal, so our opponent's just digging for a sweeper pretty much. Portal gets back Circuit Mender, but doesn't gain them any life. And they're gonna replay Tazeret once again, but it's not gonna be enough to take us out. Transpider also doesn't trigger. So it's still a powerful laser beam, but not a lethal one. And we should have it next turn with another Master Splicer activation. One's at 55. Can we deal 55 damage? 
yeah, I guess our opponent thinks we can, but yeah, we can quickly do the math here. But uh, two more Master Splicers, making essentially four tokens each. So that's over 60 damage just from our Golem tokens. And then we can also throw the Overlord into the mix to maybe remove an extra blocker. So that should be good enough. Awesome, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Edgar, Charmed Groom, so black white Vampires. What do we think of our hands? On the play, Warhounds, not quite as good. Innocence also doesn't have too many two-powered creatures to draw cards, so a pretty disjointed hand. This I don't mind. We do need to hit an extra land drop, at the very least. But uh, yeah, Fury and Flage give us some much-needed interaction. Authority will make our creatures enter tapped. Does make our Balloon Man activation a lot less exciting. But we've got Loron to destroy it. So yeah, we'll just play Loron here. And if they present another artifact or enchantment, Balloon Man will take care of it. Their opponent passes, we can hit for two, play Delny. Or maybe the Circuit Mender. Yeah, maybe Circuit Mender. Don't really care if it dies, but it's still a good target for Balloon Man. Could also draw with Loron to maybe hit Land Drop for a turn, which I don't mind. Just an Overseer. Opponent did nothing. And time for Edgar. Don't have a way to exile Edgar. So it would be coming back in the form of Edgar Markov's Coffin to make more Vampires. But then Loran could destroy that as well with a Balloon Man's help. So maybe it is fine to use Fury to deal with Edgar so I can still uh, use Balloon Man this turn as well. So there's the coffin, and there's the balloon main. All right, so we dealt with Edgar. Hit you for four. And again, probably want to draw to try and hit my land drops. Sun Titan's not bad. So we could consider letting Balloon Man go to the graveyard if it gets removed for Sun Titan to eventually get it back. Crux of Fates, ooh, opponent chose the wrong mode, destroying all dragon creatures. That's not what they wanted to do. So yeah, all our creatures should have been destroyed. Are we gonna pretend like we don't have any creatures in play? That's gonna be tricky. I guess we'll give our opponent a turn of reprieve here. So yeah, the play here would maybe be Overseer, activate Balloon Man, draw a few more cards. If we assume we didn't have Balloon Man in play, then we don't get to draw the extra card. I'll uh, not attack for a turn here. That's kind of a compromise. And now we don't have to draw with Loron anymore. Path of Peril will now wipe the board, fair enough. Do I want to draw on the way out? Not really. And then I'll let Balloon Man go to the graveyard so Sun Titan can get it back. Could also give Sun Titan haste with the Arena of Glory. Yeah, I think that's worth it, since we'll get to immediately trigger the ability once again. So get Balloon Man. And then Overseer to draw seems fine. Opponent's at 13. I'm 
Now, of course, if they wiped the board with Crux of Fate, they weren't forced to cast a Path of Peril, but it looks like our opponent's deck is just mono sweepers. So I don't feel too bad now. Back to the command zone. Still only cost 5 mana. Opponent has, let's see, 4, 7 lands, so Warhound would successfully get an extra land for us. And uh, Delny doesn't double the trigger since it has 3 power. So now we can play a Marvin, keep up, get lost. Or we can get the Overlord going, although we can just hard cast it with haste next turn with the Arena. To immediately make a board of insects. Opponents got their own Overseer. And land tanks a draw. So I could play the Balloon Man, then Marvin also has its ability. Although we can only use those as a sorcery, so if they have removal, I still only get to use one of them. Yeah, going for Hasty Overlord in the face of open mana is not quite as exciting. So maybe we'll start with Balloon Man and see what's up. So we can activate on Warhound since the opponent still has more lands than we do. I think I'm fine just uh, sending in the Warhounds. Don't want to play Delny since it seems like they might have another sweeper lined up. Opponent trades. And we'll keep up and get lost. May as well play land tanks, although I don't think it's triggering this game. Right, opponent's going to revitalize, gain life, draw card. Cold Steel Heart is fine. Just need him to tap out for Edgar here. Signets. Because yeah, the problem with playing Overlord too is that our opponent can respond to the Enter the Battlefield trigger by destroying Overlord, so I don't get to make more tokens out of it. Bombardment's not bad, since that allows us to maybe sacrifice stuff before it gets destroyed. And then now I can give Overlord a try with haste, since I don't really need the extra mana. And I can technically use both Marvin and the Balloon Man. Do they respond? They don't, so I get the chance to copy. Could have also gone straight to attackers first in case they're just sandbagging removal, but no, that works. So we're going off. And go to attackers, making even more tokens. All right, the fairy's protection. That's fine. I think we still want to attack and then make more tokens as opposed to sacking any of my stuff. And then do we have 16 things to sacrifice? We do. Although two of these are going to go away. But yeah, I can still throw 15 damage at my opponent here. First chance I get if they cast another board wipe. And they sure do. So yeah, start chucking things at my opponents. Slowly but surely. And the opponent figured it out, they're going to be at one life, and then we should be able to just make another creature and bombardment for the win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Jani, so a red-white aggro deck. We do want to look for some cheap interaction, this hand's a little clunky. 
All right, mana tithe could be fun. Can fetch a planes to counter a Jani, which is the best answer to it. In case of the uneaten feast for life gain is fine. A land tax is tempting, but uh, let's prioritize mana tithe. All right, opponent's gonna play Orator first. I'll let that one resolve. So our plan did not quite work out. So now if I play land tax, I wouldn't be able to keep up mana tithe, but their opponent's also likely to be able to pay for it now. Yeah, interesting decision. I think I just go parlor and then get lost. Could be fine. If land tax gets us more lands, then we don't need to worry about hitting our land drops as much. Sure, I'll keep it. And we'll see if mana tithe works out. And they're gonna play Guide of Souls into a Jani, perhaps. So they're definitely leaning into the life gain synergies. And there we go, mana tithe, you're a Jani, feels good. Although next turn they can just replay it for four mana. So it's only a temporary solution. And Guide of Souls has been nerfed in Historic. So it's now four energy to use the ability. All right, now seems like maybe a good time for land tax, keep up, get lost. Could also use Loron to destroy the case, but we can do that later. So we'll see if they want to play a fourth land out and let us get land tanks going. They do need it to play a Jani, so opponent goes for it. Even though the Witch Enchanter could have been an answer to my enchantment. So it must be their last land in hand. And there's a Jani. So I think we let that go and then just destroy a Jani himself. What a beautiful day, brother. Opponent can attack. They're thinking about potential blocker here. So yeah, just uh, getting in with Orator. And then we'll destroy a Jani. So we could respond by taking out the Guide of Souls, so they cannot solve the case. But I guess it would be destroying the case with Loran soon anyway. All right, opponent sacrificed the case, but it's not like they were able to replay a Jani there. So it might have been a misclick. Although, as it turns out, we would have been able to destroy it. So could still play Loran to destroy a map token. Could get the Celebrant going. And then next turn, Balloon Man can make an extra copy. I think going for Loran is fine. Just destroy a map token. Now our opponent doesn't feel as bad that they uh, sacrificed the case on accident. And I could still ephemerate Loran to destroy another map. Cat token attacks. And they're still missing an energy to give it flying. And then just playing Elish Norns probably the move. No real need to flicker Loran. So yeah, land tax still drew us three lanes. That's good enough for me. If they have removal for Elish Norn, we could be in trouble. Since the war leader hits pretty hard. And they could also give it flying with Guide of Souls, although Elish Norn prevents them from triggering the Guide of Souls in the first place. Ooh, Cursed Mirror. So that can turn into an Elish Norn. So Elish Norn doesn't stop the mirror, but it does stop War Leader from gaining life with Guide of Souls or Orator. So still just a 4-4. Opponent did successfully make War Leader a 5-5 now. So that could have been a reason to flicker Loran, so they wouldn't have a 5-5 to attack into Ilishnorn. 
but we still have decent blocks available. Right, so our opponent gets a bunch of 1-1s. One so I can either double block the real war leader, or I can eat their mirror for free. Although Loran could also help take out the mirror with Ephemerate or Balloon Man. Yeah, maybe just double blocking the real war leader is fine. We lose Loran, but then next turn we'll still have Celebrant at the very least. Just gotta watch out that we don't get swarmed out. I think I will draw with Loran actually, since I could use a little bit more action. And a Splicer is excellent. I can play Splicer and Flicker it. Will give us plenty of blockers. And a source to plowshares as well. So we're living the dream. Triggers twice with Elishnorn. Could maybe do this now just to be safe in case our opponent responds with some removal on our 1 1. And then pass maybe after hitting for 4. Alright, so we managed to find a way to stabilize here. Opponent has a War Scribe. Actually, pretty good here with all those tokens. Luckily, we've got a bunch of 4-4s, which still block profitably. I guess Elish Norn still stops War Scribe from triggering. But our opponent's got a Jani Strength of Pride. Opponent needs 40 life for the zero ability to wipe our board. So... They're probably just gonna plus to gain life and then try and wipe the board next turn. Alright, that's uh, not gonna do anything. So that was probably not to play. Do I want to source anything right now? Not really. Ephemerate Splicer again. And then Balloon Man could also use it on the Celebrant, actually, to get an extra attack step, which is probably better than just making an extra pair of 4-4s. Four so this can exert. And yeah, we'll just send out a Jani. Don't want to put Elish Nord in harm's way. And our opponent lets a Johnny go, so we don't need to worry about it. And then now do I want to attack face? I'll send in, like, three creatures here. Alright. And then next turn, if we make another Celebrant, we might be able to set up Lethal. Still kind of sad that our opponents accidentally sacrificed their case. But uh, yeah, with Loran, I don't think it would have mattered. It's mainly that they don't have access to a Jani now, since it's actually in their graveyard. They would have been able to play it for six mana otherwise. And then, yeah, transform the Jani can threaten a lot of damage on this board. So this game might have looked a little bit different. Although then we maybe keep Loran to destroy the mirror, so they don't have as much mana to uh, set up the uh, six mana Jani. Opponent actually with a pretty powerful play, Command destroying Splicer, shrinking my team down, and pumping up their team as well. Can still line up some decent blocks. But that's why I wanted to leave back a few extra blockers just in case. So this has me taking four. Yeah, that seems fine. They'll gain some life, but we might still have lethal on the way back. No harm in playing a Circuit Mender first. And then activate on Celebrants. Go to Attackers. Attack with everyone. Exert. Exert. 
and then attack again with everyone. Exerting a second time. And then second main, I could still activate balloon main for what it's worth. But yeah, that's well over lethal. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Freyalis, so Elves, and we've got uh, Modern Horizons Special with Solitude, Fury, and Flage. Yeah, I'll keep. Especially Fury should be good against an Elf deck making lots of small creatures. Turn to Paradise Druid, I cannot take out. We'll just get our own Signet going. And then Fury can also damage Planeswalkers, unlike Freyalis. Hope they seek an Elf, so we can take out both Paradise Druid and Freyalis. But they're gonna untap Paradise Druid. So yeah, now I'm unable to take out their Hexproof creature. Unless I wanted to flash in Solitude, which was an option. But didn't seem quite worth it. So now... I guess we're looking at Blade Splicer. Or maybe Thresher to try and draw a card. Although Blade Splicer lines up a little bit better on the board. Could also use Flage to damage Freelise, but it doesn't take it out right now. So drawing another Vet card so I can both use Flage and Fury in the same turn would be good. Visionary with the extra plus one plus one from Freelise. Still doesn't block our 3-3 first strike, but our opponent can untap it, maybe. They're gonna untap Paradise Druid anyway. Yeah, I'm considering using Solitude now, since we have some excess white creatures. And then our first striker can still attack past the Visionary. So we have options, could also just use Flage, take out Visionary, and hit Freelise for 4. Or we could play the Balloon Man, and then activate it on Splicer to make another 3-3. Three, three. I think I prefer Flage this turn, since they also missed a line drop, so we just want to set them back on mana. And we can only use Balloon Man as a sorcery, so there's no window where we can activate it on Flage unless it's already escaped. Sculptor of Winter. And a Sentinel. So they could maybe try and double block a 3-3. Celebrant, not bad either. So that now gives me a red creature for Fury as well. So maybe the play is just Balloon Man, activate on Splicer. The token flies, this does have reach, but I think that's fine. Just send these at Freelies. And then hoping they block the 1-1 one -one with Sentinel, so I can finish it off alongside Sculptor of Winter. Alright, Bone lets Freelies go. In that case, I think I hang on to Fury since we might be able to hard cast it. And we would only take out one creature. And then now I can maybe play Celebrant, immediately activate the Balloon Main. Another one toughness creatures, easy to take out. And a Johnny the draw. So lots of great options available. Cannot quite cast Fury, but yeah, pitching Celebrants to take out, let's say, Sculptor and Woodland Mystic could be quite strong, or we can make the play that we mentioned of Celebrants, activate Balloon Man, exert, and get a nice chunk of damage in, which is probably the more fun option if we're being honest. So exert, these get to attack. If we had a spare mana, I could maybe use Balloon Man second main as well. But now I guess we can just attack with it. Although not that it really does much for us. And 
then next turn I can potentially exert twice if we make another copy. Our opponent's got a clan caller to pump up their team, although we can still easily take it out with our fury, and then the other creatures will shrink back down, and yeah, our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Rocco, which can certainly go toe-to-toe -to -toe in terms of uh, generating value. What do we think of our hand? Could use some more removal. We've got card draw. I don't think Arabella's going to be at its best here. So, yeah, it's a close one. I think we can take a mulligan and look for something a bit more exciting. Marvin could be pretty good once we get it going. So I'll try. And then Priest can draw, so we should be able to hit our land drops. For now, play Marvin. If it soaks up a removal spell, so be it. Invasion of Gobakan can disrupt our hands, maybe take away the Spellbinder, and kind of return the favor there. Yep, that's fine. I kind of wanted to play the priest anyway. So we've got artifact removal, enchantment removal, sort of creature removal, although not enough for Rocco. And conscripts I wouldn't be able to play. So yeah, no activating the balloon man this turn. Could attack. And then if they block a braid to finish off Rocco. It's not ideal, but opponent's probably going to take it anyway. And then we'll play the Evangelist. And then, especially with an untapped land next turn, we could play the Balloon Man. Activate it twice on the Evangelist, and that represents a lot of damage. They can transform the invasion here, maybe a reason to chump. This could make their stuff indestructible and give them even more plus one counters. They might have a plus one counter theme in their deck as well. Yeah, I think I'll uh, try this for now. Alright, so Fury is uh, not quite going to work this turn to take out Rocco. I think I'm fine playing the Fountain Ports, even though it gives him an extra food token and plus one counter. And then let's see if this works. Play Balloon Man. Activates on Evangelists, I want to say. So we have more tokens to block with. And Marvin can copy the Evangelist as well. Can target the token in case they want to remove it somehow. Alright, and then send in all of these. Triple Battle Cry. And then end of turn they get sacrificed, leaving behind more bat tokens. And our opponent's already at four. This one sadly doesn't go face. But uh, yeah, I'll pass a turn. Opponent could sack a food token to gain three. And our opponent on taps, not even sacking the food is interesting, so maybe they've got uh, something planned with those. Inspiring Statuary explains it. They can now tap those tokens to make mana, basically. Still Chump Rocco. A Loran can destroy their Statuary, so can a Braid. Hopefully they don't have some sort of Sweeper here. Depopulates. Yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to avoid. We'll still get a back token here. And then, for now, Balloon Man can go to the command zone, since I don't have a way to easily get it back. And they can still play the Scribe Gorger. And 
All right, so yeah, I guess our opponent's just dead if we bolt him for three after attacking. Could use Loran to destroy the statuary. A braid could deal with a scrap gorger, but I guess I'll take the win. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Slimefoot and Squee, so kind of like a pseudo reanimator deck. Our hands okay, uh, missing some two mana plays. But uh, yeah, three drop into maybe turn four. Balloon Man activates, not bad. Fable can also give us some more mana. And we can start out by surveilling. Maybe look for a two mana play. And a zealous conscript could lead to some fun combos, but I uh, think I'll decline it for now. And we did actually find a 2-drop, so we got rewarded. Opponent with an enchantment. Giving our creature minus one, minus one. Alright. So, play Fable next. Make a token. And there's Slimefoot and Squee. And Sky Knight down. Alright, what do we want to get rid of? Probably gonna cast Brutal Cathar, exiling Slimefoot and Squee this turn, so the Shaman can attack unopposed. And then I can still play a Jani, which seems good, so maybe I don't need Circuit Mender as much. Find Solitude and Mana Tithe. Decent options as well. Let's see if they send Slimefoot back to the command zone or not. That will also tell us a lot. They left it under Brutal Cathar, so they're planning to take it out. And cast a Jani. A lethal throwdown to take out Brutal Cathar. Get back Slimefoot and Squee. Can exile it at instant speed with Solitude, but can wait for now. And our opponent's gonna try and take out a Jani next. Nope, goes for a token. So let's untap. And get a reflection of Kiki Jiki. And now the Balloon Man can do some work. If I activate it on a Jani, I get an extra legendary copy. Keep a Jani, transform it. That seems decent. Is there any benefit to activating on Reflection? Now let's just go for a Jani. May our axes strike as one. Transform a Jani. And then. I can use a zero ability to take out Slimefoot and Squee, or their Sapperling. I guess we'll go for Slimefoot itself, they don't have anything to reanimate yet. And then we can attack. Not bad. I've got a Mana Tithe just in case. Ashnaut's Altar. That is the type of card that can set up some nonsense, but they only have the one Sapperling at the moment, so I'm not too concerned. Although, if we let Altar resolve, then Mana Tithe also loses value, so I think I'll still fight over it. And then I can just hard cast Solitude. Anointed Procession's always fun. So we'll give that a try. Make a token, which is now two tokens, and I'll still go face here. And our opponent has seen enough, we can activate Balloon Man, do some 
fun loops with uh, Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Our Shaman now makes two treasures as well. So we're certainly going off on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Kona, which can cheat all sorts of permanents into play. Definitely a commander I have on my radar. Elish Norn doesn't really stop Kona's ability, and we're lacking interaction in general, since we do want to try and stop Kona if possible. Apparition could be great for that. And then Splicer's good with Procession, so is Pyromancer if we discard an online card to it. But we likely need to deal with whatever allows them to tap Kona easily. And they're off to a nice start with a Halfling. Cathar's not bad either, so I'm probably going to prioritize double white over double red. Nissa gives them additional mana as well. So yeah, the green deck off to a great start. If they have a fetch lane to go with Nissa, especially, they get to find additional elves. And we're just going to have to be patient here. And next turn we can deploy one of our removal spells. And a Lanor tribe can also generate a boatload of mana. So yeah, if our opponent's deck is filled with expensive spells they want to cheat into play, and now they can just cast them, so they can kind of skip the Kona part of the deck. In which case, maybe Apparition Exile the Tribe is reasonable, or Brutal Cathar. And leave Apparition as maybe an answer to non-creature permanence. Although Cathar can also deal with larger stuff, whereas Apparition's kind of limited in what it answers. So yeah, I'll go with the Apparition. Deal with a tribe, which is guaranteed to make additional mana. And then maybe next turn get the Fable going, even though it would be fun to play Procession first. And there we see Relic of Legends, which I can destroy with Loran to prevent him from uh, tapping Kona for free. So that's going to be the play. Still hoping for an additional land here, so we can also maybe play Balloon Man activated. But at least the green deck's not going to have a lot of removal for our creatures, so just having these in play will provide us with a lot of options later in the game. So there's Kona, can they tap it? Not yet. And we did draw a land. So I could go with Balloon Man and then activate it on the Apparition. Just going for Brutal Cathar is also reasonable, although they might have a protection spell in hand by now. Or we could play Blade Splicer to block Kona, hoping they don't have another way of tapping it. So we do have some options. Just playing Procession feels a little greedy, although I kind of want to get to Balloon Man and play regardless. So maybe going Balloon Man and then activate on Apparition is fine for now. And Cathar is also a way of cleaning up the opponent's tokens. But they might have a protection spell here. Yeah, Tyvar stand. Alright, so... And now... I could still double block Kona if they attack with it, if we're really scared of the... survival ability. We probably should be. Although we can always try and clean up afterwards with Cathar. And yeah, opponent scoops it up, since yeah, whatever they put in play we can likely answer. And then especially if we get our anointed procession going here, doubling the tokens from Balloon Man and from our other sources, we should be able to take over pretty quickly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing an Amalia life gain deck. Our hand seems reasonable. A few ways to draw cards. Turn 4, play the Balloon Man and start drawing even more. For now we can surveil. Maybe fill the graveyard for Flage's escape. Opponent with a duo, so no black for Amalia just yet. And Evangelist would be fine, but we've got so many other three drops that I don't mind filling the graveyard for Flage. So, play Companion. More fetch lanes. Still no black mana. And a Soul Warden's next. Also good to remove. So 
So this turn, let's fetch some more to start filling the graveyard. Play Flage and deal with the uh, Soul Warden, since that also triggers off our creatures. Hit you for one. And then next turn, if I fetch again, I'm still one short of escaping Flage. Welcoming Vampire can help them draw. So I could get the Balloon Man going and make a copy of the Companion. That seems okay. And draw Anointed Procession could also be pretty fun. Yeah, if I send in both and they block the real companion, we get to escape Flage next turn, so I don't mind. Even though now I don't have the option of playing Procession and making two companions. Bones got Lurus to get stuff back, so that's the priority target now. But uh, yeah, I'll go for the escape. And deal with Lurus. And I could activate Balloon Man, get another Flage and attack with it to take out both of their remaining creatures. I think I'd rather keep Flage on the battlefield. And we'll still get one trigger at least, take out the Vampire. And then next turn Flage can attack. But yeah, this combo is pretty strong too, and our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Helga, so a banned colored creature deck. Helix should be decent. And then we've got more removal with Flage. Yeah, I'll try it. So ideally we can maybe keep up Helix to take out Helga in response to it getting a plus one counter. Although we can just take it out right away, depending on the situation. Boy, has got a Flood of Strains, fetching for probably a green source to play Mana Elf. It's just going to be a tapped Hedge Maze instead. So now I can play Ornithopter. And then Seasoned Pyromancer can help fill the graveyard to escape Flage. As we see a Fanatic of Ronas for toughness, they'll survive our three damage effects. So if I play Balloon Man, I'm not doing a whole lot here, so I may as well start with the Pyromancer. And then ditch maybe both lanes. Could also discard Flage to then try and escape it next turn. Although I guess we're pretty far from that happening still. Yeah, I think I still want the extra land, so maybe a land flage is fine. Keep the cheaper helix. Restoration Angel can flicker Pyromancer, Delny can help us trigger it multiple times. And opponents got Uro, so their own Elder Giant. And while it's in play, our opponent can hold priority to tap Fanatic of Ronas, which they did not do, so they could have made quadruple green here. Now we found the red overlord. Can impend it to take out fanatic. If I go for balloon man or opponent could have a counter spell as well. So there's a few things to consider. Passing with restoration angels may be the best way to play around a counter spell. Yeah that's fine. Opponent still being patient, so yeah, it does feel like they might have a counter up. Angel trying to flicker Pyromancer. Take action. And then even though Delny is good with Pyromancer, I would still rather fill the graveyard for Flage. 
And then Overlord seems like the better removal spell that we can maybe recur with a balloon main. Alright, Carnosaur still missing a land to cast it. So Restoration Angel can attack at the very least. Do we want to try and resolve the Balloon Man this turn? Kind of like just playing the Fear of Missing Out to progress our game plan, maybe dig towards an extra land, and then also fill the Graveyard for Flage. So maybe I do attack with the Token, since I can finish off Ronos with a 3 damage effect. Opponent does block. So yeah, let's start with the Fear of Missing Out. Carnosaur, they wouldn't be able to counter since it's kind of like a channel effect. So that's going to be the cleaner answer to the Fanatic. And then maybe a Braid can go keep the Overlord. And we did find a land. So now with the Fetch land I could escape Flage, but then they would likely counter it. So I think I would rather just use a Carnosaur for now. And then if they want to eternalize Fanatic, Overlord can still take it out. It's going to be a Kogla to fight instead. That one I cannot take out with 4 damage. So we'll fetch. How close are we to Delirium? Still missing one type. Good creature, land, instant. So maybe it's time for an all-out attack, and then cast Overlord to finish off Kogla, and then I can still play Balloon Man second main to uh, activate it on, let's say, the Pyromancer, maybe. Alright, opponent blocks Pyromancer, so now Overlord takes out Kogla. Our opponent is getting close to escaping Uro. It's going to be a Primeval Titan instead. Still keeping up that blue mana for what could be a wash away. And yeah, Primeval Titan's going to make it trivial to cast our bigger spells. Wash away, I guess, would also counter Flage since it's not from hand. So I might just have to get uh, Balloon Man countered. Ah, they're going to tap out for Mystic. So that's perfect. Now I can play Balloon Man. Activate it on the Overlord. And then take out the Primeval Titan. I suppose I should have uh, escaped Flage. And then the 3 damage from Flage could have finished off Primeval Titan. And the 4 damage can deal with Mystic and go face perhaps. But yeah, either way we'll get to clean up all the opponent's creatures. Have a pretty threatening board. So unless our opponent's got some mass sweeper, we should be alright. So we got to see the Balloon Man in action, and this deck is awesome. The deck provides a lot of value, a lot of fun to play as well, and it should be relatively future-proof, since the deck's only going to get better as we get more and more cards with powerful attack triggers and ETB effects, but at the same time it's not one of the more oppressive commanders that maybe pays for itself, thinking of Roxanne for instance, so it's not quite in that tier of broken commanders, which hopefully means the matchmaking is going to be a little bit more generous with you as well. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.